scariest words I've ever heard in my life are, you don't belong here. Growing up, my parents and I moved around a ton, but my mom was always such a good sport about it because she could pack up an entire house, get it shipped to another place, and unpack faster than you could sneeze. But by the time I was in my junior year of college and this impending sense of adulthood was on the horizon, I knew I needed to find the one place where I could settle down and spend the rest of my life. And it was halfway through a sweet potato burrito at Honest Tom's Taco Shop <laughs> that I realized it was Philly. So I spent that whole spring devising an easy three-step plot to moving to the city, getting settled in, and feeling like I was at home. Step one, find a job. Step two, get a group of friends. Step three, find a love interest. So step one, I get a job at a local arts nonprofit digitizing their paper archives, which is just a fancy way of saying data entry. But a big part of my responsibilities for the job was updating previous contact information of participants in the workshops. And I got so bored of doing this that I started memorizing people's addresses and figuring out where they were on a map so that I could get a sense of what neighborhoods people lived in and how they related to each other. Two, I find a perfect sublet in West Philly after combing through Craigslist for several weeks, and I quickly make friends with everyone in the building and all their friends, and we spend balmy summer evenings drinking Kenzingers on the porch and making fun of the frat house across the street. <laughs> and then three, First week I moved to the city, I meet Gino, your classic South Philly guy. Italian-American, neighbors are the members of the mob, an amazing chef. He makes like pasta with basil from the windowsill in his yard. And we spend the whole summer just riding our bikes all over the city into like weird neighborhoods and abandoned warehouses. And I'm just like, I feel like I'm at home. I feel like it's all working out. I'm going to have a perfect life. What's there to worry about? But then I didn't count on the one wild card in the situation, my mom. So at the end of the summer, my mom and I have barely seen each other, and I'm about to move out of my sublet. And so I say, hey, mom, come down from New York for a couple days. Help me move out. We can hang out. It'll be a good time. And she thinks it's a great idea. But then August 15th arrives, and she's supposed to meet me at my apartment at 3 PM. But she gives me a call at 2 PM and says, hey, honey, I'm here. And I'm like, oh, actually, I'm at Gino's apartment. He's in South Philly. I'll send you the address. You can pick me up. Uh, little location note. So Gino lives off of the second to last stop off the Broad Street line. And so I don't know if you're familiar with that Nate part of uh, South Philly, but it's like a little more urban. It's a little more edgy. It's not like tree-lined like the, the West Philly neighborhood. And my mom is like, character note, is the type of woman who likes to drink white wine and watch Gossip Girl in her free time. <laughs> so it's like not really her turf. Uh, so she calls me and she says, I'm outside. And I'm like, oh, do you want to come inside? Do you want to drink some water and meet Gino? And she's like, get in the car. <laughs> so I hang up and I say bye to Gino. And I get in the car and I'm just so excited to see her because we haven't seen each other all summer. And I start asking her all these questions, how you been, what's up? And she's just not responsive. And we sit in silence for a couple seconds. And then she says very quietly, you don't belong here. And, and I don't really know what to make of that. And so I say, excuse me? And she says it again, you don't belong here. And then she starts yelling at me and she starts saying like, I just drove through a demilitarized zone to get here. What are you doing hanging out with this punk kid? Like, she, and she just starts accusing me of doing all these things that I've, of course I'm not doing. And all I can think of is Spruce Street Harbor Park and beers after a nice run and staring at Google Maps for hours. And there's no way I can impart like all these wonderful memories onto my mom, so I just fight with her. And we spend like days fighting with each other until the end of her trip, I just say, you know what? I'm not going back to New York with you. I'm moving in with Gino. <laughs> and uh, this turns out to be a mistake because all I can do for the next couple of days is just hear her voice in my head saying, you don't belong here. You don't belong here. When I'm at the grocery store, when I get up in the morning, when I'm at dinner with his grandparents and they've made like eggplant parmigiana and we're drinking red wine, I just hear her voice in my head and I get up from the table and I go to the bathroom and I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, wow, you are such a fraud. How can you believe that you can just 
move to the city you've never lived in before, make friends with all these people, and suddenly you are a part of the community? What's up with that? And so at the end of two weeks, I break up with Gino, and I feel like I'm not supposed to live in Philadelphia. I don't know what I thought I was supposed to be doing. And I'm telling this story to my friend Heather, and she's like, no, Charlie, it's not about what you do to make yourself feel, fit in. It's about having love in your heart and making yourself vulnerable to other people. And you're going to find a home anywhere you go because you're willing to open yourself up like that. And I realized, you know what? You're totally right. So at the end of college, I packed up my bags. I found a place in West Philly. And I decided to make myself at home once more again with feeling. <laughs>